<laughs> r slash no sleep posted by you slash most wanted man of ohio my friend went missing during a game of hide and seek 40 41 42 43 i shouted out faster each time i couldn't wait another second 44 5 6 ready or not here i come i opened my eyes and took in the surrounding forest i thought where could my friend be i hoped they didn't go deeper into the forest it would be getting dark very soon and i didn't feel like going into the middle of the woods especially considering i already disliked being this deep even if my house wasn't too far away i started looking around for my friend Haley. i looked behind trees and i even went back to my house and searched for her but i couldn't find a trace Sadly I realized what I had to do before it got too dark out, I headed into the woods. At that moment all I felt was fear, and well. The cold. It was fall. All I had on was a light long sleeve shirt, and a pair of beat up jeans. It was dark, so dark I couldn't see 5 feet in front of me. As heavy fog rolled in, I pulled out my phone flashlight hoping it would help me see better, but no. I ended up turning it off because it was at low battery. At that moment I felt a pang of anxiety, and worry for Haley. What if she had gotten lost? What if she tripped on a branch? Did she run away? It had been about an hour. Why was she still hiding? It felt like forever since I last saw her. Since I last heard her voice. She has to be here somewhere, right? I'd keep telling myself. At that moment I heard a thud from somewhere on my left. It sounded like someone or something falling. Haley? My voice cracked as I screamed her name. What was happening? My head was reeling, I had gone dizzy with worry. My heart pounded so hard against my chest, I felt like my rib cage would explode. My breathing got harder, but I kept running not knowing where. My gut wouldn't let me stop. Suddenly, I tripped. Not sure on what. I got up, and rubbed my head. I turned my phone back on, and shone it upon what had tripped me. I flashed it around, when it illuminated a mound. As I got closer, I could just make out the shape. It was Haley. I couldn't believe my eyes, Haley was dead. There was hole in her throat. Blood was all over her clothes, and all over my shoes. Her eyes rolled back in her head. I could see her scared expression. I'm positive my face was paler than a ghost. I was about to scream, when I realized that whoever or whatever did this may still be out here. I ran back home, choking back sobs, but also the barf that I felt in the back of my throat. When I barged through the door, I saw my mom, and Haley's moms. They were having a nice conversation, but went quiet when they saw me. My new converse, soaked in blood, my face covered in snot and tears. I didn't say anything, I just ran back out. They followed behind me, but I lost them after a bit. As soon as I slowed down, and caught my breath, I let myself break down. I felt myself slowly lose consciousness. As I felt so much fear and was utterly disgusted with whoever did this to poor Haley, my best friend since we were five and four. I woke up in the middle of the night after having a horrible nightmare about Haley. It was her body and a creature, something that looked like a deer but was not a deer. Not deer, I called it. The not deer had a neck that looked like it had been snapped on a noose. Its limbs were backwards almost and it seemed to stand on two legs. Its fangs were bloody. The top fangs went through the jaw. It just stood over Hallie's lifeless body looking for its next victim. I snapped back to reality, I thought to myself why the hell did I sleep in the forest. I looked around and to my horror I realized that I wasn't where I was when I fell asleep. I tried to get up but I couldn't move. I tried to move my hands to push myself up but I couldn't, sleep paralysis I thought. I heard about it before but I had no clue why it would be happening to me. At that moment I saw her, Haley. She was hiding behind a tree in front of me, she couldn't see me. Then I saw the creature, the not deer behind her. It was slowly creeping up on poor unaware Haley. The not deer breathed heavily onto Haley's shoulder, she turned around to see it right behind her. It leapt onto her, fangs sinking into her throat talons clawing at her throat, Haley tried to scream, but it came out as a wet gurgling sound. The life faded from Haley's eyes but the look of shock still remained on her face. The not deer vanished. I still couldn't move. Time felt like it sped up, about 30 minutes felt like it passed in seconds. Then I was over Haley's body, but it couldn't be me as I was here. I realized this must have been a replay of the events that happened after and during Haley's death. I wanted to scream and shout and cry, but I couldn't. I woke up in a panic, Finally I could move, it must have been sleep paralysis. I felt the tears leave my eyes and I let out a sob, I was so tired of crying. I almost felt numb. I took a deep breath, 
got up and took in my surroundings. I was in the same place I was in my dream, but it was different. Everything had a great tint and everything felt so dead. Maybe life was always like this and maybe I never noticed? I thought, I tried to make myself believe that but deep down I knew that that was not true. Something was very horribly wrong. I was about to start walking home but then I remembered that I lived I lived west of the forest out where was west again? I looked up at the sun, it just came up. So I would have the opposite direction of the sun. I started walking, and there was an unpleasant eerie silence. No birds chirped, no rustle of leaves, and no wind. It felt like a walk that lasted forever. After ages of silent walking I came to my house. Luckily I still had my key in my pocket. My parents must have been sleeping, at that moment the gravity of the situation hit me, my BFF was dead, and my mom and dad had no idea where I was all night. But there was nothing I could do so I went to my bed and slept. I woke up sweating as I had a nightmare again. I went to my parents room expecting them to be on their phone or something but when I opened the door they were not there. I looked out the window to see if they went out but the car was still there. I searched the house for them but I couldn't find a trace of them, but they couldn't have left because the front door was still locked with a little chain. I went back upstairs to their bedroom to search for them, there in my parents bedroom, on the wall written with blood, there were the words. Start hiding at that moment I felt a breath on my shoulder. Next story of this video. Posted by you slash death by Kool-Aidman. There's something strange following my husband around. I didn't notice it until I moved into his house, about a year ago. I've been married to my husband Jack for around 6 months, and things have only gotten stranger. At first I thought he was crazy, as much as it hurts me to admit that. He always woke up in the middle of the night, claiming there was something in the room with us. He'd cover up the mirrors in the house, and he'd constantly check behind him whenever he walked anywhere. Whenever I told him that I couldn't see anything, he'd tell me that was a good thing. It can't hurt you if you can't see it, he'd say. Then I started seeing it, too. It started one night, after we had eaten dinner. We were still sitting at the dinner table, too lazy to get up. Jack had said something offhand about the news, and I looked up from my phone to respond to him. There it was. In the reflection from the window behind him, what looked like the zombie of a woman, flesh falling off and face mangled, standing directly behind him, her partially decomposed hand on his shoulder. I jumped back and let out a small gasp, quickly trying to compose myself. What's wrong? Jack asked. You didn't you didn't see anything, did you? He looked concerned. It can't hurt you if you can't see it, I remembered. No, I said. Didn't see a thing. Then I started seeing it more and more. I never saw it in person, only through reflections. In the mirrors whenever Jack forgot to cover them, in the water when I tried to have a bath, in the shiny metal dishes when I was cleaning them. Maybe it was stress, I told myself. Things hadn't been great with Jack lately, admittedly. He had been wanting to have a kid for a while, and kept begging me to have one with him. I told him I wasn't ready. But he never listened. Maybe I was just seeing things. But then again, why would Jack be seeing it, too? Could two people be seeing the same hallucinations? Jack had been getting more and more paranoid, I had noticed. I tried to go down into the basement, which I had actually never been down to, to look for a screwdriver I needed. Jack had stopped me. No, he shouted desperately. Please, please, stay out of there. He grabbed my wrist, pulling me back. I, I don't want it to hurt you, too. Please, darling, I'm only trying to protect you. Do you trust me? He looked me in the eyes, and I realized, even if we fought, even if he was super paranoid, that all he wanted to do was protect me. Yes. With all my heart, I said. Good, good. Now, promise me you'll never go down there. For your own good, he said, pulling me into a hug. I promise. I thought that would be the end of it. I thought that if I patched up my relationship with Jack, that things would go back to normal. They didn't. I still saw it, even more than before. At least once a day, that horrid, rotting corpse would be in reflections, staring at me, staring at Jack, anything. One day, it all came to a head. It was night, and Jack wasn't home. I was getting ready for bed, when I saw it in the mirror. Usually if I looked away and then looked back, it would go away, but this time, it didn't work. What do you want? I asked, not expecting a response. Avenge me. It responded in a raspy, broken voice. I stepped back. W what do you mean? The basement. Go down and find the truth. Set me free it said. And why should I do that? The thing laughed. 
I was just like you, you know. Blinded by love. Go into the basement. See who he really is, it said, and suddenly disappeared. Cautiously, I stepped down the stairs leading to the basement, armed with a kitchen knife. I found a box in the very corner of it, and I opened it, hoping it was just a box of Jack's childhood possessions, or maybe a collection of baseball cards. I was wrong. Documents, thousands of documents and personal belongings spilled out of the box. Arthur McDonald? Jack's real name was Arthur McDonald, a man who was apparently guilty of first-degree murder. And apparently, he was also legally dead. Jack, I said in disbelief. You couldn't. Oh he could, a voice suddenly said, scaring me half to death. A small hand mirror in the box held the thing. It was staring at me. Go ahead. Read the other documents, darling, it said, laughing. She was Michelle McDonald, Arthur's wife who he had brutally murdered. I really thought he loved me, you know, Michelle said sadly. But all he wanted was a child. Another heir to his family name. I was a fool. You weren't a fool, I said. You were in love. And so was I. We really are alike, darling, Michelle said. I tell you what, so long as Arthur keeps this con up, I'm doomed to stay on Earth forever. Set me free. I watched as a hand reached through the mirror, offering me a silver blade. Do it, she said. Oh I will. I answered, taking the knife. But I can't do it alone. I waited about a week to confront him, waiting for the perfect time. Michelle and I had a plan. Arthur and I were getting ready for bed when Michelle appeared in my phone reflection and nodded. It was time. I discreetly uncovered the mirror as Arthur got into bed. What should we do for dinner tomorrow, darling? He asked. Oh, I don't know, I answered. Arthur. He looked up. Babe, what are you talking about? I think you know. Just like you know about Michelle. He laughed uncomfortably. How do you know about Michelle? I'm the one asking the fucking questions here. Why did you kill her? He stared at me with cold eyes. All I wanted was a son, you know. And she couldn't give me one. Infertility, you know? One in five women, crazy, right? So I thought, if she couldn't have kids, who would ever want her? Don't you see? I was doing her a favor. And afterwards, all I had to do was start going by my middle name, and marry another woman. I mean, what were the odds I'd marry two barren ladies, you know? One of you had to have a child-bearing body. And now that you know, we can start a family together. Wouldn't that be nice? He said. No, I said, beckoning to Michelle. It wouldn't. I watched Arthur's eyes fill with fear as Michelle stepped out of the mirror, filling the room with a foul smell of rot. She limped towards Arthur as I sneakily pulled the silver blade out from my bra, where I hid it. Arthur stood protectively in front of me. Don't worry, darling. She won't hurt you. I laughed. Oh, Arthur. Silly. I said. Without a second thought, I plunged the blade directly into his back. As he crumbled to the ground in pain, I stood beside Michelle triumphantly. I know she won't hurt me, 